Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Second Act Actors. I'm your host, Dr. Janet McMorty, and I'm still a medical doctor simultaneously trying to pursue a career in acting. My guest this week is Aaron Rom. Aaron is a professional musician, a professional trumpet player, and actor. I'm not going to say turned actor because he does both. Aaron and I met in my very first online improv class. You may remember my episode with Emily Carver. She also was in this acting class. This was a, oh my God, life-changing improv class for most of us who were in there. We've all kept in touch. We call each other Stevie, Steve, Steve, Steve. It was just an absolute joy group of human beings from all across literally the globe coming together for Improv One. This was years ago, and we still keep in touch. And Aaron is one of those fabulous, fabulous human beings. He has an incredible story to tell. Oh, we had so much fun in this class together, and I just love keeping in touch with him. He also, if you follow me on social media for my birthday, sent me a video of him playing his trumpet, playing happy birthday on his trumpet. Actually, I think it was like a little mini trumpet. He's an absolute joy. Aaron, oh, I'm so blessed to have you as a virtual friend. Maybe one day we'll meet in person. That will be an absolute joy. Please enjoy the incredibly talented Aaron Rom. Is that right? Are you still there? I'm still in Florida. Yeah, yeah. Change, changed houses. We moved, but uh, but still in Florida. And uh, and yeah. Is everything okay where you are from that storm? The pictures we are. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we were very lucky. Sarasota, they're like just south of us, and like just a little bit north of us, and not not so hot. And um, this one or two towns south, really, really bad, bad shape, and still, still so. Um, just because not on the news, it's still um, apparently worse than ever. So uh, we were very lucky. Just a lot of branches and stuff like that down. Um, I think on our little like lanai right out right here, we lost a screen. <gasps> But, you know, aside from that, you know, uh, we were very, very fortunate. And um, actually, one of the guys in my uh, uh, class right now uh, said he lost everything. These were his words. I lost everything but my life. So it's like, yeah, yeah. So um, so he, he's been kind of tuning in whenever he can. And it's and it's uh, he, he's in Fort Myers Beach, which was completely leveled. Um, so it's it's yeah, it's it's, um, it's those areas, not so much vacation towns right right at the moment but um you know we we were again very fortunate we were, we were spared this was, was looking pretty grim for a little while there uh for for us but uh yeah so we up here in like more of the central ontario in canada we have a lot of snowbirds right who go down to florida for the winter and so like in that way i don't want to use the word like impacted because obviously we're so sheltered up here in Canada. We don't have natural disasters, but so many people that I know who spend a lot of their winters in Florida were just, they were telling me they were watching like on their video surveillance, you know, that you can watch online, just their houses get destroyed. And you're like, Oh my goodness. Just, yeah. Oh, you, you, mother nature. Like it just, is, uh, it just humbles you. Right. Like, Oh, it's awful. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, it's a reminder, you know, we, um, because I grew up in in this in this area, actually from Toronto, but moved down here when I was when I was a little guy. Yeah, um, so yeah, a Canadian one is convenient. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we yeah, um, we grew up evacuating for for hurricanes. You know, so like every, pretty much every year we would we would go through the ritual of of um, and, and I'm a pack rat, as you can probably see behind. Like, um, but you know, we 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 grew up kind of. St- saying goodbye to all the stuff if we needed to nothing's happened so far for whatever reason apparently there's there's cold water off of uh tampa bay which is where it's maybe 45 minutes north of us or so and uh hurricanes like warm water you know so as as things climate wise start to change we might not be as safe anymore but uh it's we've been very fortunate over the over the years that that you know every time we said goodbye to our prized possessions and things like that you know it's it's been a nice reminder of of uh what's truly important you know yeah. your family and and safety and and 
Yeah. So that, you know, again, we, we go through that ritual and not, we don't take it lightly. It's every time, you know, we, I, I, I make jokes all the time, but when it comes down to it, yeah, I'm terrified of hurricanes. I'm, I'm absolutely terrified and loading up the car in 70 mile an hour winds. It's, it's nature is brutal. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, but thank you for asking. I, I appreciate oh that. Oh my God. It's just, yeah. And I like what you said about, it's so true. We don't see it on the news anymore. It's still happening. <laughs> we Absolutely. know that not Actually, just about, our, about Florida, about everything in the world. <laughs> yes, yes. Our, <laughs> yeah, so, several things on the news that, uh, yeah. Um, but And that's that's one reason I, I, I do try and distance myself as much as I can not to, not to turn a blind eye to it on purpose, but um, say, you know, if, I, if I'm watching and not doing anything to try and help, um, I, I don't feel like I'm, you know, a, a, a better person, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I don't, I feel almost, almost, um, not complicit, but it's just like, well, if I'm worrying about that, I'm, I'm not doing anything about it, then that's taking away from everything else that I am doing, you know, as, as artists that we, that we, that we work on. Yeah. So. Well, that's such a good point, right? I think that's, yeah. Cause we can definitely. I don't think complicit is is the is the word. I know what you mean, but no, it's, it's almost like a guilt as well too. But then yes. it, it makes you <laughs> guilt, guilt, right? And then you're like, well, no, wait. There's so much more. I remember being in school and we had a thing where we had to, you know, it's like volunteerism, right? You know, like go and seek out a medical medical volunteer job where you can help you know, parts of the world or parts of your community that sure. needs it. And everyone came back from that, obviously very impacted by it. And, but everyone having different like rage about like, I went into a first nations community and was like, why aren't we spending more time and money and blah, 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 on helping our first nations community buddy down my buddy beside me was like, I was in India. Why aren't we helping people in India? And my friend was like, I was in Ethiopia. Why aren't we helping more people in Ethiopia? And I remember our prof being like, yeah, you can't help everyone, but as long as you stand for something, like, don't forget that you are standing for something, even though if you feel like you need to stand for everything, that's just so overwhelming. And we were like, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's such a tough, tough thing because, you know, from, from any perspective, what, what should be done. You know, there are, there are a lot of shoulds and, and those, the um, people in positions of leadership, um, you know, say, say what we want about that. This is not a job that I would like to have, no. you know, because of that saying like, no matter what you do, someone also loses out yeah. and, and you get, you get skewered for it, even with the best intentions. Mm -hmm. So, um, I remember it, uh, my, <laughs> I had a coach a while back, you know, so I, I jokingly said, maybe, maybe I'll run for, for office one day. He's like, don't do that. I said, why not? He says, you have a good soul. I want you to keep it. And, and I said, this is like, ouch. Like, <laughs> this is like, is it, you know, and, and yeah, there, there's responsibility and, and, you know, when, when you can do something, do it. And if, and if you can't, you know, as they say, um, do what you can and stand for something. That's, that's a, such an important Important point. Yeah. Thank you for that. Well, tell me your story. You and I met in Improv One, a second city. Yes, probably one of the greatest experiences of the pandemic, maybe my whole life, if I want to get super dramatic there. But how? tell me your story. What, how did you wind up logging into Zoom that beautiful day? <laughs> uh, Jiminy. Um, okay, so... <laughs> um, I, I grew up, um, my, my long, long time ago, my parents actually took me to a second city show for, for, for better or for worse, you know, and I'm like one of the only like young teenagers in the, in, in the audience is like, am I allowed to be hearing these words live? And, uh, and, and I just remember being just, just stunned, like how, how brilliant, um, uh, it, it was. And, and I, you know, growing up, my heroes were, were always actors, right? Um, and my, I grew up in a musical family as my uh, trade. Um, and you know, by day, I guess I'm a trumpet player in an orchestra by night, really, because that's when we perform. You know what I mean? And, um, <laughs> so, but my heroes were always actors growing up. And I, and, um, I remember seeing, um, at, at a, at a show, but my parents were playing one, one time. Um, so I was talking to my dad after the show and there's kind of a meet and greet afterwards. And I, you know, all these like, 
luminaries in the in the in the brass world you know new york philharmonic and, and boston symphony you know uh folks and and all these people who people in my trade right now would be like oh and i'm, I'm like oh his dad's friends dad's friends that's cool and i say like dad is that captain kirk he's like yeah you want to go meet william shatner and so i'm like do i want to meet william shatner and of course i do uh so i got got to meet him with that and that was and i was just like <laughs> so there was always that draw, I guess. So all that, all that um, nonsense is to to say that there was always that draw to want to do that. Um, and I guess I, I long, long part of that short is that I never really had the courage to do it until recently. So I started kind of dabbling in in, in voiceover, and I say dabbling like, yes, I was getting some work, but not not. It's like, eh, it's, I feel like I'm kind of in this way they're entirely separate but how can i act but not have to wear makeup you know that sort of thing and and so you know i i, I was doing that and then i had a coaching with uh, with someone who, had, who was doing very well in the industry she said you know you need to do some improv you're you're no offense you're kind of square and you need to oh you need to open up and i was like that's everything i've heard musically my whole life so yeah let's let's do it so yeah i, I they're like well it's this is pandemic time like what am i supposed to do it's like it's online it's like no so sure enough as a as a good student to that that later that day I, I i registered for the class and that brought us to meeting janet <laughs> <laughs> and and for for those for those uh those watching and listening um if you haven't uh seen or heard janet perform she's brilliant absolutely brilliant and and yes i am a suck up but i'm sincere about it it's it was always always a, a, a treat watching you do what you, what you do and, and especially in that class is just a real inspiration so thank you for that likewise the feeling is so mutual and i think you know I, i've I don't know if you've kept up with like Second City classes. I've definitely taken other classes at Second City and they're all great. But there's just something about that like first class, right? Like I've kept in touch with lots of people from that class just because it's almost it's almost like you, you bond over the why the hell are we doing this? Like like improv one? Like it's terrifying. Yes, it it absolutely is. You know, I've been I've been trying to uh, to to talk with with my friends. You know, spread the good word about improv one, um, and and so I I've continued on, and, and now that we actually have our our first show for conservatory, uh, the, the conservatory one tonight. Um, so and that's a very different different thing than what we're doing, um, and and uh, the level one, but it was it's it's still that again that that excitement of like completely new. This is time to let go. Time to um, you know not be afraid for it to be you know, silly and hey, and, and I, I say this carefully, not very good, right? Because everything is, is as we are responsible adults, or at least I try to be, um, you know, we, we judge things very harshly, right? And uh, it's, it's easy to fall into that thing of like, well, I'm not doing something very well, I must be a failure. And, and, and I think that's such a good, just like, even if you never do any improv or acting or anything like that, just taking an improv class is such a, a wonderful way to practice that skill of, of letting go and and hey, letting it be terrible <laughs> or letting it just be <laughs> right because um, we, we don't it's it's not something in our culture that we, that we do very often you know? and I think so much about what I've realized about improv and especially um, you know I'm part of an improv group now here and having an actual audience realizing that the audience is for the most part, I know not all the time with you, regardless, they enjoy when you do well, they enjoy when you fail, which I think is extremely rare. And I can only imagine with your day job, the total opposite. Yes. Yes. That's, that's, that's exactly right. It, it, especially in, um, Especially in the orchestral world, I think it's it's in every facet of, of of music performance, but especially with the orchestral culture. And you know, a, a lot of my colleagues are they're they're fantastic folks, and 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 they're they're very free people, right? But when it comes into the stresses of the day to day job of being an orchestral musician, and and I I don't you know, I'm not trying to badmouth or, or say anything um, you know bad about either the the culture of 
being a, an orchestral musician um, uh, or, or anybody who is in this particular spot. My cat says hi. Um, don't know if you heard I that. Um, perfect. So <laughs> you're, you're a star now. Um, it's it. Yeah, the stress is in. And you know, the, the interesting part is, Janet, you're, you're a doctor. Yes. Mm -hmm. You literally save lives. Mm -hmm. Right or probably have right, <laughs> so I'm I'm gonna go with that just because it's it's dramatic. You 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 legitimately save lives, and and it's this is such a different thing. If if I if I you know crack a note or something like that, you're like yeah, it's 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 up for judgment, right? But nobody dies as a result of of a, of a missed note, and you know in a performance like that. And you know what I I, I think sometimes we lose um, the purpose within the myopia um and and that's that's me that's not that's not anybody else that that i'm not you know pointing any fingers but i've noticed that it's it's very easy to go down that um that rabbit hole mm -hmm. you know of it has to be perfect it has to be a a certain way and and as you get to higher levels of anything yeah there are expectations you know there, there are there are those things of being a a high performer um and a uh, high performance machine. But I think the, the, that idea of, of you can't get that to, to a certain de degree unless you are willing to trust mm. and willing to say like, yeah, I've put in the work, I've practiced, I have done what everything that I possibly can. And I trust, I trust myself in the words of Schwarzenegger, trust yourself. <laughs> you know, it, it's, uh, <laughs> And it, it, at the same time, balancing that with, I was watching an interview with uh, Leslie Nielsen yesterday, and he was talking about not taking himself too seriously, you know, and that's when he, that's when the Naked Gun movies, you know, came out and, and, and things like that. And learning to do that, that's when his success really apparently skyrocketed, according to this interview. Um, and, and so, you know, that was, that was a very nice reminder for me as, as well. Yeah. I think it's interesting, though, because our brains, I don't think, realize the difference between this i'm gonna make this dramatic between like saving someone's life perfectionism and you know playing the trumpet perfectionism or acting perfectionism i don't think like yeah you could argue that one is like societally more pressure driven but like i don't like our brains don't know that they feel the oh, I'm a crappy person, oh, I suck, I'm a failure, in the same way, right? Like, I I always, <laughs> like, the first time I ever, like, failed in my life was my, like, driving test. And I remember, like, having the same gut feeling when, like, something would go wrong in my medical world. It's like, our brains don't know the difference. It's gonna make you feel like shit regardless. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I've I've been doing it uh, at least for myself, and and you know, as a musician, we end up. I think anybody working in in, in the arts, you, you end up taking on a bunch of different jobs. You know, um, and and part of our our uh, I think responsibility with that ends up being giving back. You know, right? so teaching. You know, and uh, so what what I've noticed is like a lot of the 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 battles that, that and I, I call them battles and not to not to be negative but that's that's the way they felt you know like our perception of being in performance i always loved performance i that's i thrive on it right um and noticing people's different reactions to it and um anything performance related where you know you are up for judgment of others and i, and I think that the best way i can describe it i'm, I'm sure Somebody said this and probably more eloquently than me at, at some point, but saying, you know, when we attach our self-worth to what we do as for our occupation, you know, it, it, this is dangerous when it comes to, uh, you know, performing in, 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 the, in, in the arts. Um, because, you know, one performance, if you have a great performance, does that make you a great performer? It can. It can. One not so hot performance does not make you a bad performer. Just we need a bunch of them, right? And getting that level, even when your version of a bad performance is okay, better than most people's best, right? Um, and so yeah, a little, little competition in there, sure, with with oneself. But you know, with my with my students, what I find is is that as they, um, you know, the, the numbers of performances that they go through in school, you know, you train for three, four months for just one concert. 
There's so much pressure with that. It has to be right. right? And that there's there's that in, in any other profession. I would I would imagine that's that would be a, a similar thing. You know. Um, so, I mean, in 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 your case, literally life or death thing. You say like you know stuff happens. Um, and I'm sure there's a better way to phrase that, but you can edit that out, right? Um, <laughs> nope. But but I I think in, in in terms of learning to deal with with you know what is it that we do when, as as musicians? What do we do? We play an instrument. Right? We sing. It's not. Yeah, the only pressure that we really put on ourselves is is not really real. It's imagined. It's it's created, right? In the same way that I, we we actors create characters, right? And and so that's I know we've gotten way off the original topic of of, of my story, but I I, w- I would imagine that that in in your field as well that, that there's 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 that too. It's it's a it's a high pressure endeavor, and uh, having an outlet, especially in terms of uh, you know performance and and acting, any anything on stage performing is is, is such a necessary thing. Yeah, and I think it's it's interesting because I wonder about. Like, take me back to, you know, your life growing up. And I think you were mentioning you had a very musical family. And I'm going to assume you were quite musical growing up. Did you, I have like two questions. My, I want this to like, I want to know about like, what is your outlet these days? Because you do so much creativity and art and art as like your day job. But I also am always curious about people who, who, who are that when you were growing up, was there positive pressure saying, Aaron, you're so talented, go play the trumpet for the rest of your life. You're going to be professional. Or was there ever that like that happens to lots of people I talk to that person being like, yeah, you're good, but like maybe be a bit more sensible because that's like a professional musician. That's like a, you know, that's, that's only for special talented people. Right. Like, yeah, that's a long-winded ramble about. No, I, 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 me that. I dig it. I dig it. <laughs> yes, yes, ma'am. Um, okay, so, so my, my parents. Um, uh, for, for those, those watching, please forgive. I, I, I do not mean to, to be like this or that. Um, but my, my father was a founding member of a group called the Canadian Brass, and in the, in, the, in the brass world, uh, they're, they're basically responsible. Anytime you see a, a brass quintet, you know, five folks playing a concert. Uh, they were in large part responsible for creating that market uh, as a full-time brass ensemble. So when, you know, fourth grade band came along, you know, the, the, the director sends out, you know, it's like, Hey, we're starting a band. You, you know, that was just like, and I know my parents, I brought in a letter. And I remember so vividly seeing my parents' faces. They, they were, they're like, <sighs> and it, only, only not nervous. I, I think because of, um, I like the sounds or anything where it was like, oh no, we're going to be surrounded by all these you know, gross sounds. But like, we know full well what the pressures of this, of, of, of being a world-class musician are. And, and my mom is, is a you know, world-renowned concert pianist and she's, you know, she, she does a lot of um, collaborative work. So anytime you see uh, someone in recital, like a singer or, um, uh, you know, any, any instrumentalist um, playing a concert with a pianist, Right. That would be what she did. And it does still. And uh, and and so they they were both like, do we want it, it, just my reflection? I think they were saying, do we want this for our son? I right? do. We want this this pressure, knowing that he's a sensitive guy. He wants to do a good job. He doesn't, you know, uh, per- like purposely push buttons, you know, <laughs> Um and and I I said I, I just remember this so so vividly. I said, "Mom, Dad, I want to play the dot dot dot." You remember before the like the little text chat little three dots, right? Dot 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 tuba. And they're like, "Oh man, okay." Um, uh, say so. In the tuba is a big instrument, you know. It's it's the bass voice of 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 the brass. And and uh, so my my dad says, "Okay, um, you know how Chuck, my colleague in, in the Canadian brass, wants you know he has to carry that big case. It's like you know a, a huge suitcase. Do you want to carry that around forever?" And he's and I'm like, he's like." <laughs> Okay, so what do you want to play? I'll play the trumpet. Okay, so <laughs> it was one of those things. Like, are you sure you want to want to do this? And of course, like, how how can anybody know? And so they they never they never push me to do it. 
They never pushed me in, in that direction. All they said was, if you ever want help, we'll be there. And what, what it came down to is that, um, I, I think they knew that in order to, you know, like the, let's say offspring of, of people that have been very successful in, in a given field, I don't know why I said offspring, but the second generation, we should say, often has a tougher time making, you know, because there, there's so much comparison. And I, I never, they never made a big deal about dad or mom. They, they just said like, you know, dad's going to work. And I just kind of thought, assumed that's what everybody did. Right. And so we'd go to these concerts and, and dad would be on stage and standing ovations, all this stuff. And, you know, like meeting William Shatner backstage. It's just, you know, it's like the, the, the who's who. And, and they, they never, to my memory, said like, well, do you know who your father is? I didn't get that until I was in youth orchestra. And, and the, the trumpet player next to me says, Rom, Rom, are you Ronnie Rom's son? I was like, yeah, you're so-and-so's son, too. And he was like, <laughs> so, so to me, it's just dad right and mom and dad and so there was there's pressure to always do well they said like whatever you're gonna do do it and i remember there's there's one concert in 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 youth symphony that that i i made a glaring error and i made a show of it It like (sighs) eyebrows and everything let me show you how my angry eyebrows and after the concert this is the only time i i remember the big like really like like furious with me to the point where there's a silence, you know, it's past, you know, and they never yelled. They were, they were, they were great parents. It's wonderful people. And, uh, <laughs> they were in the car on the way home, just like awkward silence. So I'm like, so, and they said, never, ever let them know that you're angry on stage. They weren't so mad about, you know, making a mistake because that happens and stuff. That's like, that's just part of being human. I said the fact that I made a made a show of being angry on stage. I said you took whatever everybody else, all the good stuff, and you you made it about you. Mm. And and I can't remember where they said that last part, but that was that was the point, at least that I got from it. And that has like that transfers into everything. You know, if you if you think about being a team player, it's it's like yeah, people screw up all the time. It happens, and if we think that that we are immune. It's, there's there's going to be a time right and do we it makes us think okay i want to uplift everybody else around me I, I i also for the sake of hey if and when i i lose my footing who's you want people to want to help you stand back up right so i think that that idea of the ensemble um is, is such an important thing and and yeah i i i play solos all the time part of my thing is, is also as a soloist but I don't treat it like I'm the most important person because I'm in front of the orchestra and say like, we're in this together without you. There is no me, <laughs> right? Like you, you, you would do just fine without a soloist. So I thank you for, you know, help me help you, you know, that sort of thing. So, <laughs> um, anyway, so that, that it was that type of, if we say positive pressure, um, when it came time for college auditions, I decided very late that I wanted to be a musician. And mostly it's because it's like, well, I'm not very good at math. Uh, I think I'll be a musician. It's like, don't, you know, it's because I never really studied, you know, and, and, and so this, this whole process, especially recently, the improv has been very, uh, in, instrumental in learning how I learn and starting to let go. So the, the other side, a little bit more dramatic, I would say, of, of making that decision to, to, to do this. Um, I never want to turn my back on, on any, anything musical. It's not like all of a sudden I want a career change of, of being an actor because that, that's, that, that's, to me, it's like that's trading one very difficult, uh, endeavor for another, right? This wrapping it all together. Um, but, you know, I, I think everybody has tough times in their lives. Everybody has moments where it's very clear to you what are the things that you have buried, you know, about the, the your goals or dreams. What are the things that always went on the back burner, you know, maybe for good reasons, maybe out of fear. 
And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just just how we how we do. And and sometimes the day to day is more important, <laughs> you know, you know, in in that moment, all right. And so I it, it just this past summer, um, like getting into the improv class and and um was was a was a huge step. I was like, oh, this just this, this is just fun. This is this is the next now to finally answer your other question. Um, this is now the playing an orchestra. I found that it's it's tough uh, because there's always a director. Right. And sometimes you're given a lot of artistic freedom. It depends on the on the on the conductor. And then when you're in a chamber ensemble, you usually have much more say in what you do. So that's where I've lived most of my life up until I started playing with an orchestra. And so to me, I'm used to being kind of more self-directed and, and having a little more control over what I the way I want to present this show. And and so with with that, so there there is a time and place for being the majestic you and other times you just sit down and play your part. Yeah. And I would, I would imagine there, there is, there is something like that to film and television acting. I mean, I, I, I defer to you on that one because I, I don't really know. I think we, as the actor tend to be narcissists and tend to think that like, we are the sun in the universe and everyone are the planets that revolve around us when really and truly like, all the other parts, all the other people that are involved, like the director, you can be the greatest actor in the world and be like, I'm going to say this line like this. And the director goes, no, Kate, just repeat after me and say it just like me. And then you say it and they're like, perfect, <laughs> moving on. Right? Like it, there's there's a time and a place when it's like, look at me. And then there's the rest of the time when they're like, no, Janet, for God's sakes, just say your line like this and we'll just move on. And you're like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, it, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because I, I, I think whenever – to the few people that I've mentioned about, you know, acting to um, – because, you know, that's that's what I wanted to do before. Right. And, and I, I, out of fear, not doing that. I was like, oh, that, that one play in high school, I didn't do very well in the audition. It must be, you know, all the baggage that we, we tend to carry. Right. Um, and, and finally just getting over it. It's like, no, dude, you just didn't practice. Um, <laughs> saying like, okay, so what are the things that, 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 what's the idea? What was that meme that was, that was going around a, a, a few years ago? Is that, uh, it's like what, what people think I do versus what I actually do. <laughs> yes. Right. Then, and I think there's, especially in the music world, especially in the, in, in the acting world, I would imagine, I, I don't know for, for sure, I, I defer to you on that one, that, that there is this inflated idea of, of what it actually is, right? Mm. And I, I listen to a lot of, a lot of interviews about this, the, just out of my own curiosity. So, you know, when, when it comes down to the cameras are rolling, you're there performance and and is this this idea where time stops and 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 all this magical stuff happens or is something created and we move on just like in music i i have to wonder yeah and i think i think it can be both and i think it's also what you can kind of you as the actor can make out of it right like if you are going into something hoping that or like missing that creative outlet and like soul seeking deep juicy scene like you're going to be horribly disappointed especially when you're first starting out and like all you're doing is like being silent on camera and this is a commercial for taco bell right but i think um where was i going with this oh i remember it's i also wonder about the newbies in the industry can be so that can be so um disenchanting when they realize that that kind of like eye opening oh this is not what i expected but then it's also like you haven't earned the ability to be that like deep clint eastwood actor director i can do what i want because it's like who are you right so <laughs> I, I, it's it's hard to grapple with i think right and i sure. i think because there's so little control as an actor, especially starting out and especially in film and television, that I can see why there's such a high atrophy rate. Because you go in thinking it's going to be this like magic and then you kind of are shocked when it's not. And then you're like, great, that's not what I was expecting. Bye. Um, 
yeah, it's it's interesting. And that's why I, I try and like get people as much as possible if they're interested in, in acting. I'm like, go do background work. Go be an extra. Interesting. Just go on that's set cool. and see if you like it. Because nine times out of ten, I bet you're going to go and be like, huh. <laughs> that it, it's just it's not it's not what it, people expect. No, it really is not what people expect it to be because they're 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 wanting to they're wanting I think they're wanting the theater experience, the on stage mm. theater acting experience where there's nobody there being like cut, ugh, okay, reset it, do it again, say it this way. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I it was the uh, the the scene at the end of Zoolander, right? Mm. Will feels like. Dear God, it's beautiful. <laughs> you know, I, I think all, all performers, regardless of, of field, are, are looking for that same thing. And occasionally it does happen. Occasionally it's one of those, you know, and, and, you know, your colleagues look at you and be like, yeah, it's like the, the that, that, that Robert Redford gif. Like, yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. <laughs> well, I, I think that's where, um, well, the lack of control, I think, is a huge piece for people, especially when they come from careers that there is a lot of control and kind of perfectionism to be kind of released into a world or like wanting to be in a world where there's like you literally have no control over anything. It can be kind of freeing, but also really frustrating because what do you like? What do you cling to? It's that's such a. Yeah, at least to me, very interesting. Something you geek about this sort of this sort of idea that the idea of control and like everybody needs something. Everybody needs some something to latch onto. And and what is that? Does it have to be the external? Does it have to be like you know um, how other people treat me, or that I know I have this security in my job, or this or that or the other? Naming examples, right off the top of my head. Yeah, <laughs> improv. And and then so <laughs> um versus okay, what what can I control? Cuz most, you know, the weather, you know, we were just talking about this a little little while ago. What's the first thing anybody ever talks about when you in a small talk in an elevator? The weather. Yeah, it sure is beautiful out there today. It's just like great, you know, and, and an elevator is not the time to be having an in-depth uh conversation about your thoughts on life. And, you know, all, all the pursuit of happiness. Right. But you know, when when we come to this, um, that trust. Right. What what is this that, that, that we do and how do we view it? Right? And how do we view ourselves? And that coming back to me, because I'm so humble, um, that was the, the, the thing that I, I came to was, was that, um, you know, what when did I lose trust in myself? And as soon as I started looking at that more. Um, seriously, even though I was just talking about, don't take yourself so seriously. It's like, man, this, this is why I've had some performance anxiety, just like everybody is even behind the stone face. It's like, you know, this, this sort of thing. And, and the, the wrong kind of nerves, you know, the, the, the not so fun kind of stress. And as, as soon as I started looking at that, it's like, all of a sudden you was able to kind of put that to the side and it's like acknowledge it say thank you for looking out for me i appreciate you don't really need you anymore um and and that trust came in and where other careers i'm not sure like you, you need to be competent in whatever you do that's no matter what what field you in, you should be competent you should aim to be if you're an accountant be the best possible accountant you can be um and i don't know what a day-to-day -day lifestyle for an accountant is but i would imagine just do what you do well and so there, there is that trust that is absolutely necessary no matter what we do. And I wonder, you know, when it comes to that, like if you if you're new to something, you haven't had enough experiences to know what that is, what what it actually means. You know, so you know, I started taking acting coaching um, in the earlier part of the summer. And, you know, I'm just now at the stage of like. Okay, I know this isn't working, you know, in the terms of what I'm what I'm doing. My coach, Jeannie Hartman, is is, is awesome. She's a wonderful teacher. She says, the, "This is like you just get more, <laughs> do it again, do it again here." And and so just just starting to kind of like, oh, this like the equivalent of like, okay, I'm I'm starting to draw the outline of of more of just a stick figure, <laughs> right? Okay, I know that it sucks now. What do I need to do to get to this next step? What do I need to do? Okay, I trust that I can do this because I'm paying attention now. And this is a gross 
overgeneralization of what, what that process is. I know I'm making a lot of people angry just by that terrible description, but that's where that, that journey has, has kind of taken me of, of, of self-discovery um, and how it applies to everything around me. And so what have you noticed? I know you mentioned like way back when people were saying, do improv because you're a square. Um, what have you noticed like that you've brought into like your teaching and orchestra and stuff like that now? What have you pulled in either from that into your acting or and vice versa? In short, willingness to take a risk and not a risk that is that that is um without thought it's not like i'm gonna go skydiving and see if my pair if i need a parachute right it's nothing like that it's more of of taking like if this is if this is my my comfort zone i'm going like one toe over right <laughs> little bits at a time it's, graphics right i wish i had some <laughs> a green screen uh, but if just like take take wherever we are in our comfort zone and being willing to 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 step just a little bit over you do that on a daily basis, all of a sudden you're a mile away from where you were in your nice, comfortable little box of, of, hey, if I say something stupid, it's not, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it for this particular scene. Within reason, within reason, of course, because this is, you know, it's not like, you, you, you know, this being an improv is like, we never want to say anything that makes anybody truly uncomfortable. But if I say something that is like, man, self effacing, it's like, I made, I made an ass of myself just now. But nobody got hurt. It's 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 fine. It's we'll laugh about it. That's the type of risk I, th I think that is worthwhile taking because you you start to say, okay, what do I learn from that? Mm. What do I walk away from? And and I'm, I'm proud of what what I've what I've accomplished just by doing that of like pushing myself a little bit further outside this comfortable little box where nobody can nobody can influence me because mm -hmm. I've lived most of my life there. On, on a very personal level, I, 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 I don't have any problem saying that. Is that that's from a musical perspective, most of the time from the trumpets, you know, conductor says this, <laughs> right? Because when the, the trumpets are playing, you know, it's, 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 we, we are, you know, it's full and, and the composers want that. However, there's always something else going on. It's not just the most important thing in the world. It's usually with somebody else. Um, Unless it is just a trumpet thing. Boom. We have that too, occasionally. Very occasionally. And so, if you say, okay, they they do this all the time, I always was more on the careful side. And so they would say, like, I got used to hearing, like, okay, trumpet, Aaron, we need more, we need more, we need more. And it would just piss me off to no end, because like, I'm trying, but there is an inner block in my head that I can't get over right now. <laughs> of course, you can't say that. <laughs> but I said, Okay, right. Try a little more, and and so with with this, I've discovered that that you know even in the in the you know um, in the attempt to do better, we uh, I'm finding this with some of my students too. Good people don't want to make it uncomfortable for somebody else, especially with the trumpet. I don't want to hurt anybody's ears. I don't want to make them feel uncomfortable, and say like, hey, if you're making a beautiful sound and it's a little bit louder, it's not going to hurt anybody. All right. So being able to reframe things, I guess, is the shorter answer to your question, being able to be comfortable with with, um, you know, having your opinion, you know, ex expressing what you got to say musically or literally, um, again, within within reason. Uh, so that's that's been the the effect that I've noticed of of being willing to what I viewed before as taking a risk um, of, of playing out and um you know, letting that voice be heard. Do you have any advice for anyone who's interested in either improv, voice acting, or like trying to take a risk? Because I think I, I'm going to toot our horns a little bit. Like it takes some serious cojones to be like, I'm going to sign up for an improv class online with a group of strangers. Um, do you have any advice for anyone who might be interested? Yeah. Um, do it before you can think about it. Do it, do it before you have time to talk yourself out of it and, and realizing that if you're nervous, probably everybody else is too. There was, you know, the, there was that usual thing of like, what if I don't, what if I'm not funny? What if I, what if I don't do that? And I said, it's not about that. 
It's not about that. That's such an important, like if, if I, I feel like, you know, second city's improv one. And I, and I think probably comparable with, with, with any other um, improv school that's, that's, that's out there is getting you used to just doing it. And the instructors are, are fantastic and guiding you the right way of, of, you know, there's that line, your comfort zone, just one toenail out. <laughs> one toenail one knuckle one you know uh, one foot out you know little by little you know you don't have to break the whole cage it's just just a little little bit by little and that's that's been really important for for me and it's and it's been a, a really fun ride so far so do you have any favorite moments either in your orchestra life or improv any memorable stories there, there are actually too many to think of at the at at at, at the moment. But you know, I remember one um, that that uh, a scene that that you and I did. I was is at the end of one of the um, uh, kind of near the end of of the of the term, and um, we like there was you had to remember the whole. I can't remember what the what the game was, but you had to remember the 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 whole thing. And one of the the character that you played, I I, I apologize, I can't remember the character, but it was so it. It was so funny and and just just like quick that it it made it really <laughs> made it really hard to kind of continue on with with the rest of it. But it was like that that type. I was more proud of myself for like keeping going without without you know without just busting out laughing the entire time. Um, and in terms of you know in, in improv, I think uh, of memorable stories. I. I have to just kind of go back to the, the act of just doing it, of, of, of taking, you know, what, what I perceived as a risk and, 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 uh, and, and doing it past all the feelings. Right. Um, and that, that to me is memorable because that's, that's for, for those of us who, who think a lot, um, we, there are all the reasons why we shouldn't and, and take a risk with, with anything. You know? And and just the act of doing that is, is to me is quite memorable. Now, as far as uh, in in the orchestra, I, I getting into it first. Um, <laughs> so one of the 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 nature of the job is we we don't speak very much, right? We we you you sit there and coming from a freelancing perspective, you you show up, you play your part, you do it really well, and 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 you leave. Be polite. You know, don't complain, just don't ask for the check, just <laughs> show up and do your job. And that's that. And and if you do a good job, you'll get hired again. If you're nice, you'll get and people like you, you get hired again. And so that's that's where I where I kind of came from. And, and and I remember sitting there the first time I played with a professional orchestra so years and years ago. And this, you know, for a lot of musicians that that's um, classical musicians, that's the dream. That's the goal. That's we we had this romanticized idea of like New York Philharmonic, the Chicago Symphony, all this stuff. And I sat down there and then I, I remember hearing the conductor uh, say, uh, well, um, we I, I need you to play it rhythmically, but you need to be expressive. And I was thinking like, but that's that. Well, that's true. Uh, that that's this is the dream. <laughs> this this is the dream. I was very confused. Right. <laughs> so it, it, because everything I was doing was was orchestra quintet teaching coaching all this other stuff and then like that was just another another thing it said like this is a very different mindset than than, than i was used to and i was the odd man out everybody else said like hmm. okay it's like <laughs> okay <laughs> and, and and so with with that um realize like getting to understand the the more more of the culture involved and and for any orchestral musicians that that might be tuning into this um please understand that that by comparison i am a newbie with with that and i might have a terribly misrepresented uh, way of viewing it so i apologize if that's the case um but i but i will say that when it came time for the the chamber ensembles to go and do outreach programs that's where i grew up that's what i i you know that was the example and and so most of my colleagues didn't want to be at the microphone speaking. And to me, that's, that's fun. It's, it's also kind of a test to see like, and it's not, I'm not, I'm not saying we should pride ourselves in not being prepared, but being able to function in that environment of like, you are given very little information. All you have is the composer and the, 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 the title of the piece. Talk about it. All right. And so what I ended up doing is, is taking, and it happened to work out well, um, expressing 
a personal story related to this this piece as as it came up to it and not not some long diatribe just something simple and relatable right because that's that's what audiences want right they want to feel something with you it's not about i'm up here you're down there it's like we're in this together right and what ended up happening was was one of those moments where like you actually just told a personal story on stage huh interesting so you know, this 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 idea where where it ended up um working in my favor because of of that that improv like, kind of forcing you into that position of operating you know with very limited information and you you just make it up and and you go with it and and you you are open mm. and being willing to work so that's um i know i, I didn't give you one specific story really i i screwed the issue sorry but <laughs> I think that's, that's really interesting, like a neat, a neat blend of what you've been doing, right? And what would you say your like parents, loved ones, whatever tribe, wh- how would they describe what you do these days? Oh, that's a good question. I think question mark. <laughs> <laughs> they, <laughs> I, I think... Um, I, I think they, they, they describe it as doing my own thing, uh, just because it's so far outside of, uh, either the training or what is normal. Huh. Um, and, and that's, that's what I think that we, we, we do take a little pride in, in, in that of, of not being, uh, just like everybody else, mm-hmm. right? And, and being willing to be vulnerable, being willing to take responsibility, to, you know, um, uh, and, and express something because it, what I don't know about you, but I, I've noticed that, 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 um, many people, you know, not even professionally, just many people that we run across are so guarded. Um, especially now coming, coming out of the pandemic, um, I shouldn't say coming out of the, but post lockdown, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, uh, post lockdown, everybody's so guarded and, and, you know, to, to, to a very important degree, rightfully so. Um, but where, where I say emotionally guarded is the, is the, the trickier one is because if we, it, like how many times of, of anybody that, that's listening to this, you had something to say to something really important to you, uh, to say to somebody and you couldn't say it for whatever reason. Um, I, ideally it's again, within reason, um, like say like something is, as small is like, Hey, you said that one thing to me and it, and, and it kind of hurt. Um, you know, um, you, you hold that in, what does it become? Like it becomes this giant, right? And, and, and it potentially could take it over, you know, um, it's like all of a sudden you find reasons to be pissed off at this person. You know, just as an example, it grows if you can't express. And that's what in, in the arts is what we're doing. We're expressing, finding ways to do that. And so I, I, I think that, that there is a little bit of, um, when, when I am asked kind of what my day to day, is of you know past teaching past rehearsal past all this other stuff it's that's what it ends up uh, uh, being kind of a like what do you do kind of confusion question mark (laughs) (laughs) and and i i still try to answer that question myself because i don't i don't really know you know i'm i'm productive on a daily basis but you know it's <laughs> we have to practice it's, it's what it's what we do you know and and pra- but what what is the practice kind of consist of and and it ends up being for in my case i'm practicing being more open being more expressive um and and you know whether it's musically or verbally say what you gotta say and do it and do it in a way that um you know if it's in a performance it's effective for what we're what we're doing um if it's from you know interpersonal relationships being you know for, for, say talking with 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 my wife you know you never say anything that puts that person down never say anything that makes them feel like less of a person right so things like that i know that this i'm i tend to give long answers you can imagine what my students They're have to deal so with good, uh, <laughs> thanks <laughs> that's a hard not not thumbs down um but <laughs> <laughs> but that that ability to express is something that that I think everybody I, I I want everybody to have, and the way that you go about doing it, whether that's through an improv class or a painting class or or any number of things that I can't think of off the top of my head, 
of doing that, find the way to express and, you know, you, you, your, your life will change. Your life will change. And it doesn't have to be toward anybody else. Just journal, write. And that's one of the things my, my um, uh, acting coach had me start doing initially was start writing. Mm. And like, you know, we, journaling is, is now kind of in, in vogue, you know, with along with, with meditation. I am an active meditator um, uh, myself, but you know, figuring out what happens when you just put stuff down on paper and being able to look at things just, okay, that's, that's that. Do I have to latch onto it? Do I have to judge it? Do I have to be in it all the time? No, no, but I can't express it and see what, see what comes of that. Will it help me do what else I do? Mm. And so trying to frame it in that way has, has been, um, yeah, you could probably see why why people look at me kind of in a, in a like question mark sort of way. <laughs> for for a myriad of reasons, right? I'm so like I love what you said there. I mean, yeah, question mark. Anyone who who has a nine to five ish is gonna look at somebody without that and be like, huh? right, and not really understand. But I love what you said about about expression, right? I think I've heard this a lot recently about about. You know, because I think we we go through weird phases. I don't know if you go through this. I definitely do. Where I'm like, why? Am, yes, yes. Human? Yes, me too. Um, <laughs> if like what? Like why? Why am I doing this? Right? Like the the acting thing. Like it's. I w- I'm a doctor. That's contributing to society. Like, what does acting have to contribute to society? You're just an actor. You're just a. Bleh. But. And then I, I go through phases where it's, I realize the people who express these things, like that's literally the only way that we like push story and push like empathy on into the world. Absolutely. I think that's beautiful. Well, Absolutely. And I can't take credit for it. My therapist said it um, when I was like having a crisis of identity being like, ah, what? I'm not contributing to society. And she's like, the people who express their opinions, their voice, their good communication skills, like you're talking about, into the world, that's how society improves. Like, that's literally how society has improved from the beginning of time. And and I think that's so – I love what you said there. It doesn't have to be – like out into the world but you just it, you just expressing it into a journal makes it um part of you which then will make it part of the world i don't i'm just rambling woo woo up in the ether no no it's it's, it's powerful it's I absolutely think, true i think when we kind of get down powerful. on ourselves um as creatives and you know I, I think part of this um well while it's become a necessary part of marketing and and kind of how we how we do things and and social media i i don't know about you i perf- i personally have never like felt better about anything by scrolling through social media and expressing an opinion through there like that's that's like i need to do something i i uh, something versus like uh, what what i did feel better and and this was just just me i i noticed like it just keeping track of my heart rate, you know, this, you know, scrolling and, and, or my habits, you know, what's the first thing you do every morning, All right? Is it, does it have to do with your phone? And so like, okay, let's step away from that. I'm just guilty. And, and saying like, okay, so, so where does the, the, that, that contribution come from? And, and what is, what is that outlet saying? Um, maybe we'll put too much pressure on ourselves that it has to be something that's grand, and and perhaps perhaps it's just a bunch of little little steps or seemingly little steps here in 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 the moment. Um, and so like musically, yeah, I, I know that lots there are lots of musicians that feel the same exact thing. Like you you um, one of the most gratifying things musically that that you know I didn't grow up um, as a religious person necessarily. We, you know my dad was Jewish. Mom was Lutheran, so we, we we celebrated everything that we could, right? So to the horror of some, and 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 so now you know my 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 wife and I have been playing uh, every every weekend uh, at at the, the Catholic church where we were married. That's not 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 you know my my belief system per per se, but helping other people in their worship, right, has been. Um, I I realized something felt right about it. And is it technically demanding? No, 
No. Is it musically demanding? Yes. <laughs> right. And, and so that, that has been one of those things where like, you know, who knows, you might learn something new by, by doing this. Right. And, and so helping others within their, their pursuit has also been a really, really important part. So, you know, it's easy to get wrapped up into me, me, me. Um, and as I've been rambling on, you were, you were not rambling at all. I, I've been rambling this whole time. Um, literally. <laughs> and, um, and, but where does that, what, what's the point of like, I should say, perhaps the thing that helps us get out of that is to help somebody else through their, uh, their questions or offer them something that gives them. And to, to roll off of that, um, the first movie I saw coming out of the pandemic, uh, my wife and I were, were in Utah playing for this opera festival. And uh, <laughs> I'm up there watching the actors on stage like, this is so cool. Oh, I got to play my part. You know, <laughs> supposed to be playing right now. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> and uh, uh, anyway, so, so he said, you know, like nobody's this, you know, they're not doing anything. Hey, the new Top Gun came out. Like and say what whatever we want about Tom Cruise. Like to to me, it was just one of those one of those things that 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 as a as a kid, I'm I'm like I want to see this movie. And we got into the theater and like there's nobody else there, you know. So you know, masks come off and we're eating our popcorn because it's hard to eat popcorn. My my bathtub full of popcorn, you know, uh, indigestion for three days. Anyway, uh, <laughs> and before before the movie i don't know if this was in every theater but the you know tom cruise comes on big screen he's in a movie theater saying like welcome back this is great to be great to be back and and i was thinking like this this is kind of a turning point for me it's like that made me make that call to an acting coach that said like this feeling of being in a theater again this feeling of what this offers to people going to a movie just in a, as an escape perhaps for two hours or whatever the movie makes them feel um, is so powerful because I haven't seen a movie in theaters for three years. I've been watching tidbits of movies on Netflix. It's like, Oh, got to do the laundry. You know, like this, it's always interrupted. Right. And I'm, I'm, I, I just like right then and there before the movie and started, I, I started crying because it, it, it was like, Oh, this is, I, I've forgotten what this feels like. This, this has been such an important part of my life growing up, but being in movies and, and, and just watching this stuff go and, and that feeling of being there with them. Right. Um, it, it was just like, that's really powerful. So I want to do that. You know, it made me think like, am I doing that enough musically in, in what I do day to day? So again, it's, uh, we tend to look at these things as job, 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 but versus like, what is that, what is that contribution? Um, and what are we helping other people feel or discover or be reminded of all the feels? Yeah. You know, I, well, uh, we, we have, uh, we have our first, uh, conservatory show for second city, uh, th th this, this evening. So that's, um, you know, th and, and that's more sketch comedy. So it's not, not as much improv, uh, on, on this time around. So, um, I'm learning, I, I have a couple, no, one monologue, um, and, and a couple other scenes that I'm in. So I'm very, very much looking forward to that. And that's, that's all over zoom. So I think it's, it's more, more nerve wracking getting the, the, like the background changes and, <laughs> <laughs> at this point the tech part of it uh you know at, at, at the right timing but uh anyway so that's that's one thing i'm looking forward to and and uh as far as that just kind of continuing learning you know working going through the classes at uh second city and and the um and, and continuing working on things with my with my coach so yeah yeah how about you what do you have coming up let's see um, I guess it'll be pending when this this comes out. Um, but let's see. So we're heading into the winter in Toronto, right? In Canada. Winter is coming. Winter is coming. Winter is legitimately here. I'm in my sweater. It's sweater weather. Um, so we go into, like, in Canada, the filming industry has very distinct on off switches and we oh. like in the next two weeks the switch will be very like k -k -k off because nobody films up here why the hell would you want to it's minus 40 it's snowy like when you can be in la and everything looks beautiful so 
Yeah, so this, this there's not much to look forward to from an industry standpoint. So that's always a bit of a mindset shift that I know a lot mm. of us struggle with up here. Um, but looking forward to, I've got, I uh, I made like full union in Canada, which is really <gasps> exciting. Like full, like, congratulations. Like Thank you. It's like you're the SAG or whatever awesome. down in the States. Um, so my, yeah, I know, right? So my two, like, f- those films will be coming out hopefully in the next like couple year or so. And then I, I know, I'm so excited. And then I, um, I'm producing a pilot television show. No. Yeah. So that's going to be my first wow. foray into producing. And uh, we'll see. So and happy it, for you. That's awesome. Thanks, man. I'm excited. It's like, it's one of those things where I'm with a bunch of other people who were all learning how to do it. Uh-huh. And we just keep laughing with each other. Because we're like, if nothing comes of this, at least all of us will have uh, a good scene for our acting demo reel. <laughs> right? There's that, just, sure. If, right? If nobody picks it up, everyone's like, this is garbage. They'll be like, well, at least we, at least we have a nice scene for my demo reel. So, but yeah, we'll see what happens, right? I'm having a blast, like, learning what that is. Um, yeah. So we'll see. That's that's all like another talking about question marks, you know. I I think when you say I'm 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 producing or doing this, it's, it's, it's like so so what does that do? What do you do? What do you do? I I don't know. It's a question mark. I've not that's up I'm asking you. Like anybody listening, please, what what do you do? <laughs> right now it seems like it's a it's a lot of like fun group chats and a lot of like Right, right now we're in the prep for like just building the world that we want so it's you know building that's awesome and writing with it. it's it's really fun yeah that's really wonderful fun. and it's funny because you chat with people and of course the immediate reaction at least to me is like this is going to fail right that's mm-hmm. what i say right because i don't have any experience nobody has any experience then you get that one person who's like yeah but nobody knows what they're doing and the i don't know if you ever watched freaks and geeks I I never have, but I've I've heard tales heard of, of, of of this. Yeah, yeah. I think most people have heard tales of it because every single one of those people, including Judd Apatow who created it, are now like mega famous. And yeah, it's not going to happen to everyone, but there that's like the beautiful story of like nobody knew what they were doing. It was this weird show that actually flopped and got canceled. But they all decided they all were going to work together forever because they enjoyed the experience so much and learning together. And now all they do is make movies together. And you're like, has to start somewhere. <laughs> well, that right there, I, 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 I hope that stories and, and lessons like that become more uh, prevalent because that like having that, you know, that system of working with people that you like and that, that you – even if you disagree all the time, like you respect each other and you and and you know that that's that's there, you you can create. Even if the first like it's you know nothing works a hundred percent of the time, right? And there there will be flops, there will be failures, but did you have a good time doing it? Did you did you learn something? Is the next you know it, it, you, you create your own manual for the next time? That's awesome. That's so cool. Thank you. Um, I'm also I'm still doctoring, so um, there's doctor. Still that. Yeah, that's kind of have to. It pays the bills. What 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 are your hours like? How how much? Because you, you do so much. Like how do you do this? How, now we flip flop roles here. Yeah. <laughs> so what would you say you do there? <laughs> yeah. What what do, what do my loved ones say I do for a living? No. So yeah. So I have I have a sports medicine practice, which takes up like three days of my week, and then I'm on call doing something called surgical assist. So what that is, is if they ever, yeah, if the surgeons ever need an extra set of hands, um, it's usually after hours, like overnight or on the weekends. Um, I'm on call probably, I'd say, four to six times a month. And so that's a bit more I can navigate and place days whenever I want. So it's a bit more flexible. Um, I also practice like the epitome of first world medicine, sports medicine. So, and I did it on purpose because it's not like there aren't that many emergencies because I'm sorry your elbow hurts for the golf game you have this afternoon. I can't see you until the next day. People will be fine. So that in of itself was a strategic 
Because yeah. you're smart. You're smart. Well, you know, and it's all, it's also the I should also say it's also the type of medicine I love that I loved that learning of the orthopedics and all that stuff. But like, it's fascinating. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a fun it's a fun non urgent stress down. Um, now that the lockdown is over, I mean, during the pandemic time, we were th- thrown into. I was put in positions. I was like, I haven't done any of this since my medical training. But again, we all kind of were coming out of our specialties needing to do whatever. Show you over Zoom, like, my elbow's hurting. Can you, can you, it it kind of, kind of hurts, you know? (laughs) Well, and we're noticing it now, like, I'm worried it's going to start again in the winter where they'll be like, okay, we need all the doctors and nurses who haven't, like, worked in the emergency department in 20 years. You need to come because we're so low in staff. I'll be like, okay, you know. Are you sure? You sure it's not knee pain? You sure it's a heart attack? It's probably his knee. Do you have any final words of wisdom or advice? Play. Play. That's I I I that that's my new kick uh as of late just because so much um of the of the reflection has is important stuff learned and all that um has come out of of the search and what it comes down to is something so simple we we watch kids just having a great time and they're 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 brilliant improvisers right um some of them that that try and get out of trouble end up being wonderful actors um (laughs) but just 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 play and 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 enjoy the the process and that that i'm saying that just as much as a reminder to to me as i'm really starting this journey i know you i i there's a fair amount of imposter syndrome in in my own part uh and coming into the this 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 interview in in the first part because i know that you have big names coming in on, on this con- uh, podcast that, that do this all the time, um, the, the, you know, day-to-day life. And, 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 and for me, I'm just, I'm just getting started with, with the learning and trying to keep it in, in that same perspective of, of, of play, because that's when the, the best musical products have come out of, of, of my, uh, I should say career, but, but also my soul, um, of just, just playing, having, having fun with it. And, and, and with that, doing your honest, best of a real real work into it but when it comes time just play thank you everyone for tuning in and thank you aaron stevie steve 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 university thanks aaron for being my guest this week sorry that's all inside jokes people if you haven't taken improv at second city online do it obviously do it in person if you can but if you have to do it online Man, is it amazing. You meet some serious friends and cheerleaders and champions for life. Do it. I hope you will all tune in next week for another episode of Second Act Actors. Bye. Second Act Actors is produced and edited by me, Janet McMorty. Theme music by Guillaume. Additional sound editing by David Studio. Additional video editing by Jackie Wadewer. Show notes written by Sarah Hopkinson. I record using Riverside FM. If you're interested in developing an interview-based webcast like mine, I highly recommend this platform. Shoot me an email and I'll direct you to the wonderful folks there. If you or someone you know is interested in being a guest, email me at secondactactors at gmail.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. My love language is words of affirmation, so compliments, constructive criticism, and feedback are always welcome and encouraged. Negative Nancys, Judgy McJudgersons, or Debbie Downers, unless you're Rachel Dratch, regarding me or my guests are not welcome. It takes serious courage to share your story with the world, so if you're tempted to negatively comment about someone else's story, please ask your therapist why you're such a garbage person. Save the drama for the stage. On that happy note, I hope you'll tune in next week for another episode of Second Act Actors. Bye! Bye!